Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you. And may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, lead our meditation and reveal His will to each of us. Pay attention, dear friends. What a wonderful thing. Jesus sent out, he gave authority to his disciples, 70 of them. He commissioned 70 disciples to go preach the gospel, heal the sick, and deliver people. And they came back. It's very nice. They returned extremely joyful. They returned happy. And very, but very happy. Because the demons subjected to them. People were healed. People were blessed. Because in the name, in the name of Jesus, in the authority of the Lord Jesus, and in the word of the Lord Jesus, then they did wonderful things. And when they said to Jesus, rejoicing, very happy, then Jesus said to them, listen, I'm paraphrasing here. You should not rejoice because the unclean spirits subject to you. But rather rejoice. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Very nice isn't it? Which means that Jesus is telling them the following, you should not rejoice because of the healings, the signs and wonders and miracles, or because of the results of the evangelistic work and the wonderful work you did. But if there is something that you should rejoice over, it's because your name is written in the book of life. It is written in heaven. So, it's interesting that when Jesus said that, in that very hour, in that hour, the text says that Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit. The text says, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit. And because he was joyful in the Spirit, because he was very happy in the Spirit, then he said this beautiful prayer, this worship, giving thanks to the Father. He said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them and revealed them to babies. The little ones. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. Which means it was His will. Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit because He was joyful in the Spirit. He said this prayer from the depth of his soul, giving thanks to the Father 
the Lord of heaven and earth. And then he says like this. Then he turned to his disciples and said to them, Blessed, meaning happy, are the eyes which see the things you see. Meaning, blessed are the ones who saw, those who have seen the power of God, the wonderful signs God performs, because they are obviously seeing the testimony of the, or the testimonies of God's power. So, for example, the testimony of this young lady who was stabbed 20 plus times, I don't know how many, and she did not die. She did not die because God kept her. God protected her. And then we see the greatness of God. He exists. The unbelievers, the friends of hers who were unbelievers said, Oh, wow, indeed, it could only be God. You didn't get lucky. It's, it's God. Meaning that even though they were unbelievers, they saw, they are seeing God's power in the life of people, especially of this friend of theirs. And Jesus said like this, he said, look at how nice, how wonderful. He said to his disciples, He said, For I tell you that many wish to see what you see, and they didn't see it. And indeed, many have seen the power of God. We are always posting here testimonies, wonderful testimonies. The whole day, right? We have it on the church media, all the testimonies that come to us, what God has been doing. And this is not to show the value or how efficient our work is. Not at all. This is to show the power of God to those who still haven't seen His power so that they may testify, they may know that God exists, that He is still alive, and that He is the same what He did in the past, He does in the present, and He shall do in the future. So, when you watch a testimony, wonderful testimonies that have been posted here, and in all the media of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God is for this reason. It's for everyone to know that God is the same. He has not changed. What He did in the past, He does in the present, and He will do in the future. However, the problem, and He is the greatest problem, the problem is that people acknowledge, they acknowledge God's power. They acknowledge that He exists. However, this acknowledgement does not mean that they are converting or that they are giving their life to God and embracing their belief in Him. They applaud, they clap hands, etc. However, this does not mean anything more than that. Nothing more than that. Because they continue to live what only God's power can show. Now, of course, that due to this, there are people who there are people who convert, who surrender, who are going through many problems and hardships, and these people, however rich or financial conditions they may have, however wise they are, they can't resolve their problems. For example, 
the sadness they have within. An inner sadness, a sadness that is abnormal, that not even they understand what's happening. Unfortunately, these people have a void in their soul. They carry a void within them. And for them, the world is gray, it's cloudy, there's no color. Why? Because inside of them, there is no, or there wasn't still that revelation that the Father gives us through the Lord Jesus. The revelation that only He is the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no, no one else, there's no other door through which one can go through and enter into life or to conquer life. There's no other way. There's no religion. It's not the pastor, the bishop, the pope, the priest. It's not the Muslims. No one. There's no human being. There's no religion. There's nothing that can deliver a soul from the abyss that can give peace to an afflicted soul except the Lord Jesus. That's what he died for. So that he could give us what we need, not what we want, but what we need, what we need. God, dear friends, is always ready to hear our cry out. But the cry out that will attend to His will. Of course, that He wants to heal, He wants to deliver, He wants to save. He wants to do wonders in people's lives. However, above all things, he wants to be acknowledged. He wants to be recognized as Lord. That's it. And as long as the person does not understand this and does not obey and does not subject to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus, they will continue to suffer, groaning, and no one will be able to do anything for them. No one will be able to help them. Why? Because the spiritual problem is resolved in a spiritual way. It's not an emotional problem. It's a problem that is strictly spiritual, which God resolves when the person is humble in spirit. It's difficult to be humble in spirit because everyone thinks that they can do this and that. They think that they can count, right? The world counts on the strength of its arms and its intelligence and ability. And while the person is depending on their own strength, they will suffer. Because if the problem is spiritual, then how can you resolve using the strength of the flesh, right? How is it going to resolve the problems with all the wars happening in Europe, in the Middle East? How can this problem be resolved? using physical strength. It will never be resolved. There will always be killing and there will always be injustices, pains, suffering. And there is no way to resolve this because the problem is spiritual. And if the problem is spiritual, there is only one who can resolve it. It's the Father of the Spirit. It's the eternal Father. It's our 
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, dear friends, I don't know what you are going through. I know that many problems are out there. You know, people come to leave their comments on Instagram. They expose their pain, their suffering. However, we can pray. I pray, of course. I pray that God will enlighten people's understanding because if he doesn't do it, they won't submit to him. They have to understand the penny must drop that without him, there's no way for a person to resolve their problems. I always believed in the following. It's what happened to me. If we receive, if we receive the Spirit of God, we become the richest person on the face of the earth because the Spirit of God will guide us into the right path, into righteousness, into the direction of what is right. He will guide us to the green pastures and to the still waters. He will satisfy the desires of our hearts. But firstly, firstly, we have to receive Him and submit our lives to Him. Submit our lives to Him. Because that's what we lost, right? Adam and Eve, they lived a wonderful life. They had no problems at all. They lacked nothing. They were perfect. There was no disease, no infirmities, nothing. Not even a cold. Not even that they had. They lived in the perfection of God's presence. They had the world at their feet. Dominion over everything. But when they disobeyed God, which means that they stopped serving the Lord, that's why Jesus in the prayer said here, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. He is Lord. And no one else is Lord. Only he is Lord. The only Lord. So when Adam and Eve stopped considering him as the only Lord, and they desired, and they submitted themselves, and subjected themselves to disobedience and rebelliousness, meaning they stopped submitting to the word of God, and they submitted to the word of evil, the word of the devil. And that was it. From that moment on, this corrupt humanity was born, lost, disoriented. And in order for a person to go back to the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Innocence, they have to accept Jesus as their only Lord and Savior and follow his rules, obey his word. It's not just to say, oh, I accept Jesus as my Lord. No, you have to accept him and follow him and follow him. If you follow him, which means if you obey his word, you will be happy. That's what happened to the disciples. Those 70 who went out delivering, healing, casting out demons, and they came back happy, rejoicing. Why did this happen? Because they obeyed the voice of the Lord Jesus. So the demons subjected to them. The diseases disappeared. So there were signs. Why? 
because they submitted to the word of God. They obeyed. They served the Lord Jesus. So the great problem of mankind is this one. Mankind serves themselves, the flesh, the instincts, their desires. That's the reality. You do not need to obey the devil. You just have to follow your own instincts that you are going to be fulfilling the devil's will. But if you want to obey the word of God, you will have to contradict your instincts, your wills, your desires. You will have to stop being the Lord of your own life to be a servant of God. That's it. So, at the end of the day, all the conflicts in the world comes down to this. Either you serve God or you serve yourself. In other words, to serve oneself is the same as serving the devil. Because he instructs, he inspires, he leads the person and they follow their instinct. And that's why this world is such a mess and confusion. However, you do not need to follow this crowd towards hell. You can change your life. You only have to submit to the word of God. You only have to submit your life to the Lord, to the only Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so the Holy Spirit will guide you to the green pastures. So when you change your mind, when you change your thought and you place your thoughts according to God's, then your life changes and you become the happiest person on earth. This happened to me. I can tell you this as well. I have authority to speak about this. So I sacrificed my will. I sacrificed of the Lordship of my own life. And I allowed myself to be led by the word of God. And so God transformed my life. Therefore, dear friends, think about this. Faith is a matter of intelligence. It's a matter of intelligence, of wisdom. Because faith is not a feeling. Faith is action. It's reason. You reason, you consider, you think, you evaluate. You have been serving yourself for how many years already? Oh, since the day I was born. Very well. And what was the result of it? How is your life? Oh, my life is horrible. Well, it's because you are serving yourself. But when the person stops serving themselves to serve the Lord of heaven and earth, the Lord of heaven and earth, then their life changes. The inner being changes. And once the inner being changes, the exterior will also change. May God bless you, dear friends. May God bless you indeed, opening your understanding, enlightening your mind, because if he does not, if he does not do it, if he doesn't do this work of opening your eyes, you are going to continue blind and serving yourself, in other words, also serving the devil. And then life indeed becomes bitter. May God bless you. And today, you who have a family and you want to save your family today we shall all be in the universal church of the kingdom of god praying crying out for the family you see the devil since he entered the life of mankind he destroyed mankind he destroyed homes he destroyed the values the moral values and the spiritual values. One, one of the commandments of God's law, which mentions 
obedience followed by a blessing is the one when it concerns children honoring their parents. Honor your father and mother what for? So that your days may be prolonged on earth. So when we honor father and mother, then it's written. It is written. Our days will be prolonged on the earth. However, the devil distorted, changed this order, this discipline, and said, no, you have to be free. You don't have to be listening to your mother or father. You have to know what you want. Do this, do whatever you want. I mean, the devil destroyed this understanding of respecting, of loving mother and father, the respect towards the father and the mother. So when the father or the mother curses a child, that child is cursed because they have authority to do so whether they are good or evil, but it's a father, a mother, they have authority over the child. And the child that is wise will obey their parents. I remember that my father and mother, it was seven of us, brothers and sisters, and we always had the utmost respect towards them, my father and my mother as well. We always had to come to them and say, your blessing, Father, your blessing, my mother. If we didn't go to ask for their blessing, we were rebuked. So what happened? None of us rebelled against our parents. None of us was lazy. None of us became criminal or an addict or, you know, none of us became criminals. No. We were brought up within a discipline. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect. But it followed at least a principle. Honor your father and your mother so that your days on earth may be prolonged. And this happened. May God bless you all and I see you tomorrow. May God bless. Amen.